2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook. Section 10 School Buses Page 10 to 1. Section 10 School Buses. This section covers Danger zones and use of mirrors loading and unloading emergency exit and evacuation railroad highway crossing student management anti-lock braking system special safety considerations. Because state and local laws and regulations regulate so much of school transportation and school bus operations, many of the procedures in this section may differ from state to state. You should be thoroughly familiar with the laws and regulations in your state and local school district. 10.1 Danger Zones and Use of Mirrors 10.1.1 Danger Zones The danger zone is the area on all sides of the bus where children are in the most danger of being hit, either by another vehicle or their own bus. The danger zones may extend as much as 30 feet from the front bumper with the first 10 feet being the most dangerous. 10 feet from the left and right sides of the bus and 10 feet behind the rear bumper of the school bus. In addition, the area to the left of the bus is always considered dangerous because of passing cars. Figure 10.1 illustrates these danger zones. 10.1.2 Correct Mirror Adjustment Proper adjustment and use of all mirrors is vital to the safe operation of the school bus in order to observe the danger zone around the bus and look for students, traffic, and other objects in this area. You should always check each mirror before operating the school bus to obtain maximum viewing area. If necessary, have the mirrors adjusted. Figure 10.1 10.1.3 Outside Left and Right Side Flat Mirrors These mirrors are mounted at the left and right front corners of the bus at the side or front of the windshield. They are used to monitor traffic, check clearances and students on the sides and to the rear of the bus. There is a blind spot immediately below and in front of each mirror and directly in back of the rear bumper. The blind spot behind the bus extends 5 degrees to 150 feet and could extend up to 400 feet depending on the length and width of the bus. Ensure that the mirrors are properly adjusted so you can see 200 feet or 4 bus lengths behind the bus. Along the sides of the bus. The rear tires touching the ground. Figure 10.2 shows how both the outside left and right side flat mirrors should be adjusted. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook Section 10 School Buses page 10 to 2 Figure 10.2 10.1.4 Outside Left and Right Side Convex Mirrors The convex mirrors are located below the outside flat mirrors. They are used to monitor the left and right sides at a wide angle. They provide a view of traffic clearances, and students at the side of the bus. These mirrors present a view of people and objects that does not accurately reflect their size and distance from the bus. You should position these mirrors to see the entire side of the bus up to the mirror mounts. Front of the rear tires touching the ground. At least one traffic lane on either side of the bus. Figure 10.3 shows how both the outside left and right side convex mirrors should be adjusted. 10.1.5 Outside left and right side crossover mirrors These mirrors are mounted on both left and right front corners of the bus. They are used to see the front bumper danger zone area directly in front of the bus that is not visible by direct vision, and to view the danger zone area to the left side and Figure 10.3 Right side of the bus, including the service door and front wheel area. The mirror presents a view of people and objects that does not accurately reflect their size and distance from the bus. The driver must ensure that these mirrors are properly adjusted. Ensure that the mirrors are properly adjusted so you can see the entire area in front of the bus from the front bumper at ground level to a point where direct vision is possible. Direct vision and mirror view vision should overlap. 
the right and left front tires touching the ground. The area from the front of the bus to the service door. These mirrors, along with the convex and flat mirrors, should be viewed in a logical sequence to ensure that a child or object is not in any of the danger zones. Figure 10.4 illustrates how the left and right side crossover mirrors should be adjusted. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook. Section 10 School Buses page 10 to 3. Figure 10.4. 10.1.6 Overhead Inside Rear View Mirror This mirror is mounted directly above the windshield on the driver's side area of the bus. This mirror is used to monitor passenger activity inside the bus. It may provide limited visibility directly in back of the bus if the bus is equipped with a glass-bottomed rear emergency door. There is a blind spot area directly behind the driver's seat as well as a large blind spot area that begins at the rear bumper and could extend up to 400 feet or more behind the bus. You must use the exterior side mirrors to monitor traffic that approaches and enters this area. You should position the mirror to see the top of the rear window in the top of the mirror. All of the students, including the heads of the students right behind you. 10.2 Loading and unloading more students are killed while getting on or off a school bus each year than are killed as passengers inside of a school bus. As a result, knowing what to do before, during, and after loading or unloading students is critical. This section will give you specific procedures to help you avoid unsafe conditions which could result in injuries and fatalities during and after loading and unloading students. The information in this section is intended to provide a broad overview, but is not a definitive set of actions. It is imperative that you learn and obey. The state laws and regulations governing loading slash unloading operations in your state. 10.2.1 Approaching the stop Each school district establishes official routes and official school bus stops. All stops should be approved by the school district prior to making the stop. You should never change the location of a bus stop without written approval from the appropriate school district official. You must use extreme caution when approaching a school bus stop. You are in a very demanding situation when entering these areas. It is critical that you understand and follow all state and local laws and regulations regarding approaching a school bus stop. This would involve the proper use of mirrors, alternating flashing lights, and when equipped, the movable stop signal arm and crossing control arm. When approaching the stop, you should approach cautiously at a slow rate of speed. Look for pedestrians, traffic, or other objects before, during, and after coming to a stop. Continuously check all mirrors. If the school bus is so equipped, activate alternating flashing amber warning lights at least 200 feet or approximately 5 to 10 seconds before the school bus stop or in accordance with state law. Turn on right turn signal indicator about 100 to 300 feet or approximately 3 to 5 seconds before pulling over. Continuously check mirrors to monitor the danger zones for students, traffic, and other objects. Move as far as possible to the right on the traveled portion of the roadway. When stopping you should bring school bus to a full stop with the front bumper at least 10 feet away from students at the designated stop. This forces the students to walk to the bus so you have a better view of their movements. Place transmission in park, or if there is no park shift point, in neutral and set the parking brake at each stop. Activate alternating red lights when traffic is a safe distance from the school bus and ensure stop arm is extended. Make a final check to see that all traffic has stopped before completely opening. The door and signaling students to approach. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook. Section 10 School Buses page 10 to 4. 10.2.2 Loading procedures perform a safe stop as described in subsection 10.2.1.
Students should wait in a designated location for the school bus, facing the bus as it approaches. Students should board the bus only when signaled by the driver. Monitor all mirrors continuously. Count the number of students at the bus stop and be sure all board the bus. If possible, no names of students at each stop. If there is a student missing, ask the other students where the student is. Have the students board the school bus slowly, in single file, and use the handrail. The dome light should be on while loading in the dark. Wait until students are seated and facing forward before moving the bus. Check all mirrors. Make certain no one is running to catch the bus. If you cannot account for a student outside, secure the bus, take the key, and check around and underneath the bus. When all students are accounted for, prepare to leave by, closing the door. Engaging the transmission. Releasing the parking brake. Turning off alternating flashing red lights. Turning on left turn signal. Checking all mirrors again. Allowing congested traffic to disperse. When it is safe, move the bus to enter traffic flow and continue the route. The loading procedure is essentially the same wherever you load students, but there are slight differences. When students are loading at the school campus, you should turn off the ignition switch. Remove key if leaving driver's compartment. Position yourself to supervise loading as required or recommended by your state or local regulations. 10.2.3 Unloading procedures on the route perform a safe stop at designated unloading areas as described in subsection 10.2.1. Have the students remain seated until told to exit. Check all mirrors. Count the number of students while unloading to confirm the location of all students before pulling away from the stop. Tell students to exit the bus and walk at least 10 feet away from the side of the bus to a position where the driver can plainly see all students. Check all mirrors again. Make sure no students are around or returning to the bus. If you cannot account for a student outside the bus, secure the bus, and check around and underneath the bus. When all students are accounted for, prepare to leave by, closing the door. Engaging transmission. Releasing parking brake. Turning off alternating flashing red lights. Turning on left turn signal. Checking all mirrors again. Allowing congested traffic to disperse. When it is safe, move the bus, enter the traffic flow and continue the route. Note. If you have missed a student's unloading stop, do not back up. Be sure to follow local procedures. Additional procedures for students that must cross the roadway. You should understand what students should do when exiting a school bus and crossing the street in front of the bus. In addition, the school bus driver should understand that students might not always do what they are supposed to do. If a student or students must cross the roadway, they should follow these procedures walk approximately 10 feet away from the side of the school bus to a position where you can see them. Walk to a location at least 10 feet in front of the right corner of the bumper, but still remaining away from the front of the school bus. Stop at the right edge of the roadway. You should be able to see the student's feet. When students reach the edge of the roadway, they should stop and look in all directions, making sure the roadway is clear and is safe. Check to see if the red flashing lights on the bus are still flashing. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook Section 10 School Buses Page 10 to 5 Wait for your signal before crossing the roadway. Upon your signal, the students should cross far enough in front of the school bus to be in your view. Stop at the left edge of the school bus, stop, and look again for your signal to continue to cross the roadway. 
Look for traffic in both directions, making sure roadway is clear. Proceed across the roadway, continuing to look in all directions. Note the school bus driver should enforce any state or local regulations or recommendations concerning student actions outside the school bus. 10.2.4 Unloading Procedures at School State and local laws and regulations regarding unloading students at schools. Particularly in situations where such activities take place in the school parking lot or other location that is off the traveled roadway. Are often different than unloading along the school bus route. It is important that the school bus driver understands and obeys state and local laws and regulations. The following procedures are meant to be general guidelines. When unloading at the school you should follow these procedures perform a safe stop at designated unloading areas as described in subsection 10.2.1. Secure the bus by turning off the ignition switch. Removing key if leaving driver's compartment. Have the students remain seated until told to exit. Position yourself to supervise unloading as required or recommended by your state or local regulations. Have students exit in orderly fashion. Observe students as they step from bus to see that all move promptly away from the unloading area. Walk through the bus and check for hiding slash sleeping students and items left by students. Check all mirrors. Make certain no students are returning to the bus. If you cannot account for a student outside the bus and the bus is secure, check around and underneath the bus. When all students are accounted for, prepare to leave by closing the door. Fastening safety belt. Starting engine. Engaging the transmission. Releasing the parking brake. Turning off alternating flashing red lights. Turning on left turn signal. Checking all mirrors again. Allowing congested traffic to disperse. When it is safe, pull away from the unloading area. 10.2.5 Special Dangers of Loading and Unloading Dropped or Forgotten Objects Always focus on students as they approach the bus and watch for any who disappear from sight. Students may drop an object near the bus during loading and unloading. Stopping to pick up the object, or returning to pick up the object may cause the student to disappear from the driver's sight at a very dangerous moment. Students should be told to leave any dropped object and move to a point of safety out of the danger zones and attempt to get the driver's attention to retrieve the object. Handrail Hang UPS Students have been injured or killed when clothing, accessories, or even parts of their body get caught in the handrail or door as they exited the bus. You should closely observe all students exiting the bus to confirm that they are in a safe location prior to moving the bus. 10.2.6 Post Trip Inspection When your route or school activity trip is finished, you should conduct a post trip inspection of the bus. You should walk through the bus and around the bus looking for the following articles left on the bus. Sleeping students. Open windows and doors. Mechanical slash operational problems with the bus, with special attention to items that are unique to school buses mirror systems, flashing warning lamps and stop signal arms. Damage or vandalism. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook. Section 10 School Buses page 10 to 6. Any problems or special situations should be reported immediately to your supervisor or school authorities. 10.3 Emergency Exit and Evacuation An emergency situation can happen to anyone, anytime, anywhere. It could be a crash, a stalled school bus on a railroad highway crossing or in a high-speed intersection, an electrical fire in the engine compartment. A medical emergency to a student on the school bus, etc. Knowing what to do in an emergency before, during and after an evacuation can mean the difference between life and death. 
10.3.1 Planning for Emergencies Determine need to evacuate business The first and most important consideration is for you to recognize the hazard. If time permits, school bus drivers should contact their dispatcher to explain the situation before making a decision to evacuate the school bus. As a general rule, student safety and control is best maintained by keeping students on the bus during an emergency and slash or impending crisis situation. If so doing does not expose them to unnecessary risk or injury. Remember, the decision to evacuate the bus must be a timely one. A decision to evacuate should include consideration of the following conditions Is there a fire or danger of fire? Is there a smell of raw or leaking fuel? Is there a chance the bus could be hit by other vehicles? Is the bus in the path of a sighted tornado or rising waters? Are there downed power lines? Would removing students expose them to speeding traffic, severe weather, or a dangerous environment such as downed power lines? Would moving students complicate injuries such as neck and back injuries and fractures? Is there a hazardous spill involved? Sometimes, it may be safer to remain on the bus and not come in contact with the material. Mandatory Evacuations The driver must evacuate the bus when the bus is on fire or there is a threat of a fire. The bus is stalled on or adjacent to a railroad, highway crossing. The position of the bus may change and increase the danger. There is an imminent danger of collision. There is a need to quickly evacuate because of a hazardous materials spill. 10.3.2 Evacuation Procedures Be prepared and plan ahead. When possible, assign two responsible, older student assistants to each emergency exit. Teach them how to assist the other students off the bus. Assign another student assistant to lead the students to a safe place after evacuation. However, you must recognize that there may not be older, responsible students on the bus at the time of the emergency. Therefore, emergency evacuation procedures must be explained to all students. This includes knowing how to operate the various emergency exits and the importance of listening to and following all instructions given by you. Some tips to determine a safe place A safe place will be at least 100 feet off the road in the direction of oncoming traffic. This will keep the students from being hit by debris if another vehicle collides with the bus. Lead students upwind of the bus if fire is present. Lead students as far away from railroad tracks as possible and in the direction of any oncoming train. Lead students upwind of the bus at least 300 feet if there is a risk from spilled hazardous materials. If the bus is in the direct path of a sighted tornado and evacuation is ordered, Escort students to a nearby ditch or culvert if shelter in a building is not readily available. And direct them to lie face down, hands covering their head. They should be far enough away so the bus cannot topple on them. Avoid areas that are subject to flash floods. General Procedures Determine if evacuation is in the best interest of safety. Determine the best type of evacuation front, rear or side door evacuation, or some combination of doors. Roof or window evacuation. Secure the bus by placing transmission in park, or if there is no shift point, in neutral. Setting parking brakes. 2015-2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook. Section 10 School Buses Page 10-7. Shutting off the engine. Removing ignition key. Activating hazard warning lights. If time allows, notify dispatch office of evacuation location, conditions, and type of assistance needed. Dangle radio microphone or telephone out of driver's window for later use, if operable. If no radio, or radio is inoperable, Dispatch a passing motorist or area resident to call for help. 
as a last resort, dispatch two older, responsible students to go for help. Order the evacuation. Evacuate students from the bus. Do not move a student you believe may have suffered a neck or spinal injury unless his or her life is in immediate danger. Special procedures must be used to move neck spinal injury victims to prevent further injury. Direct a student assistant to lead students to the nearest safe place. Walk through the bus to ensure no students remain on the bus. Retrieve emergency equipment. Join waiting students. Account for all students and check for their safety. Protect the scene. Set out emergency warning devices as necessary and appropriate. Prepare information for emergency responders. 10.4 Railroad Highway Crossings 10.4.1 Types of Crossings Passive Crossings This type of crossing does not have any type of traffic control device. You must stop at these crossings and follow proper procedures. However, the decision to proceed rests entirely in your hands. Passive crossings require you to recognize the crossing, search for any train using the tracks and decide if there is sufficient clear space to cross safely. Passive crossings have yellow circular advance warning signs, pavement markings and cross bucks to assist you in recognizing a crossing. Active crossings this type of crossing has a traffic control device installed at the crossing to regulate traffic at the crossing. These active devices include flashing red lights, with or without bells and flashing red lights with bells and gates. 10.4.2 Warning Signs and Devices Advance Warning Signs The round, black on, yellow warning sign is placed ahead of a public railroad highway crossing. The advance warning sign tells you to slow down, look and listen for the train, and be prepared to stop at the tracks if a train is coming. See Figure 10.5 Figure 10.5 Pavement Markings Pavement markings mean the same as the advance warning sign. They consist of an X with the letters RR and a NO, passing marking on two lane roads. There is also a no passing zone sign on two lane roads. There may be a white stop line painted on the pavement before the railroad tracks. The front of the school bus must remain behind this line while stopped at the crossing. See figure 10.6. Figure 10.6. Cross buck signs. This sign marks the crossing. It requires you to yield the right of way to the train. If there is no white line painted on the pavement, you must stop the bus before the cross buck sign. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 10 School Buses Page 10 to 8 When the road crosses over more than one set of tracks, a sign below the cross buck indicates the number of tracks. See Figure 10.7 Figure 10.7 Flashing Red Light Signals At many highway, rail grade crossings, the cross buck sign has flashing red lights and bells. When the lights begin to flash, stop. A train is approaching. You are required to yield the right of way to the train. If there is more than one track, Make sure all tracks are clear before crossing. See Figure 10.8 Gates Many railroad highway crossings have gates with flashing red lights and bells. Stop when the lights begin to flash and before the gate lowers across the road lane. Remain stopped until the gates go up and the lights have stopped flashing. Proceed when it is safe. If the gate stays down after the train passes, do not drive around the gate. Instead, call your dispatcher. See Figure 10.8 10.4.3 Recommended Procedures 
Each state has laws and regulations governing how school buses must operate at railroad, highway crossings. It is important for you to understand and obey these state laws and regulations. In general, school buses must stop at all crossings, and ensure it is safe before proceeding across the tracks. The specific procedures required in each state vary. Figure 10.8 a school bus is one of the safest vehicles on the highway. However, a school bus does not have the slightest edge when involved in a crash with a train. Because of a train size and weight it cannot stop quickly. An emergency escape route does not exist for a train. You can prevent school bus slash train crashes by following these recommended procedures. Approaching the crossing slow down, including shifting to a lower gear in a manual transmission bus, and test your brakes. Activate hazard lights approximately 200 feet before the crossing. Make sure your intentions are known. Scan your surroundings and check for traffic behind you. Stay to the right of the roadway if possible. Choose an escape route in the event of a brake failure or problems behind you. At the crossing stop no closer than 15 feet and no farther than 50 feet from the nearest rail, where you have the best view of the tracks. Place the transmission in park, or if there is no park shift point, in neutral and press down on the service brake or set the parking brakes. Turn off all radios and noisy equipment, and silence the passengers. Open the service door and driver's window. Look and listen for an approaching train. Crossing the track 2015-2016 to Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 10 School Buses Page 10-9 to Check the crossing signals again before proceeding. At a multiple track crossing, stop only before the first set of tracks. When you are sure no train is approaching on any track, Proceed across all of the tracks until you have completely cleared them. Cross the tracks in a low gear. Do not change gears while crossing. If the gate comes down after you have started across, drive through it even if it means you will break the gate. 10.4.4 Special Situations Bus Stalls or Trapped on Tracks If your bus stalls or is trapped on the tracks, get everyone out and off the tracks immediately. Move everyone far from the bus at an angle, which is both away from the tracks and toward the train. Police officer at the crossing. If a police officer is at the crossing, obey directions. If there is no police officer, and you believe the signal is malfunctioning, call your dispatcher to report the situation and ask for instructions on how to proceed. Obstructed view of tracks. Plan your route so it provides maximum sight distance at highway rail grade crossings. Do not attempt to cross the tracks unless you can see far enough down the track to know for certain that no trains are approaching. Passive crossings are those that do not have any type of traffic control device. Be especially careful at passive crossings. Even if there are active railroad signals that indicate the tracks are clear, you must look and listen to be sure it is safe to proceed. Containment or storage areas If it won't fit, don't commit. Know the length of your bus and the size of the containment area at highway rail crossings on the school bus route, as well as any crossing you encounter in the course of a school activity trip. When approaching a crossing with a signal or stop sign on the opposite side, pay attention to the amount of room there. Be certain the bus has enough containment or storage area to completely clear the railroad tracks on the other side if there is a need to stop. As a general rule, add 15 feet to the length of the school bus to determine an acceptable amount of containment or storage area. 10.5 Student Management 10.5.1 Don't deal with on-bus problems when loading and unloading. In order to get students to and from school safely and on time, 
you need to be able to concentrate on the driving task. Loading and unloading requires all your concentration. Don't take your eyes off what is happening outside the bus. If there is a behavior problem on the bus, wait until the students unloading are safely off the bus and have moved away. If necessary, pull the bus over to handle the problem. 10.5.2 Handling Serious Problems Tips on handling serious problems Follow your school's procedures for discipline or refusal of rights to ride the bus. Stop the bus. Park in a safe location off the road, perhaps a parking lot or a driveway. Secure the bus. Take the ignition key with you if you leave your seat. Stand up and speak respectfully to the offender or offenders. Speak in a courteous manner with a firm voice. Remind the offender of the expected behavior. Do not show anger, but do show that you mean business. If a change of seating is needed, request that the student move to a seat near you. Never put a student off the bus except at school or at his or her designated school bus stop. If you feel that the offense is serious enough that you cannot safely drive the bus, call for a school administrator or the police to come and remove the student. Always follow your state or local procedures for requesting assistance. 10.6 Anti-Lock Braking Systems 10.6.1 Vehicles required to have anti-lock braking systems The Department of Transportation requires that anti-lock braking systems be on. Air brakes vehicles, trucks, buses, trailers and converter dollies built on or after March 1, 1998. Hydraulically brake trucks and buses with a gross vehicle weight rating of 10,000 lbs or more built on or after March 1, 1999. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 10 School Buses Page 10 to 10 Many buses built before these dates have been voluntarily equipped with ABS. Your school bus will have a yellow ABS malfunction lamp on the instrument panel if it is equipped with ABS. 10.6.2 How ABS Helps You when you brake hard on slippery surfaces in a vehicle without ABS, your wheels may lock up. When your steering wheels lock up, you lose steering control. When your other wheels lock up, you may skid or even spin the vehicle. ABS helps you avoid wheel lock up and maintain control. You may or may not be able to stop faster with ABS, but you should be able to steer around an obstacle while braking, and avoid skids caused by over braking. 10.6.3 Braking with ABS When you drive a vehicle with ABS, you should brake as you always have. In other words use only the braking force necessary to stop safely and stay in control. Brake the same way, regardless of whether you have ABS on the bus. However, in emergency braking, do not pump the brakes on a bus with ABS. As you slow down, monitor your bus and back off the brakes if it is safe to do so to stay in control. 10.6.4 Braking if ABS is not working Without ABS, you still have normal brake functions. Drive and brake as you always have. Vehicles with ABS have yellow malfunction lamps to tell you if something is not working. The yellow ABS malfunction lamp is on the bus instrument panel. As a system check on newer vehicles, the malfunction lamp comes on at start up for a bulb check and then goes out quickly. On older systems, the lamp could stay on until you are driving over 5 mph. If the lamp stays on after the bulb check, or goes on once you are underway, you may have lost ABS control at one or more wheels. Remember, if your ABS malfunctions, you still have regular brakes. Drive normally, but get the system serviced soon. 10.6.5 Safety Reminders ABS won't allow you to drive faster, follow more closely, or drive less carefully. 
ABS won't prevent power or turning skids ABS should prevent brake induced skids but not those caused by spinning the drive wheels or going too fast in a turn. ABS won't necessarily shorten stopping distance. ABS will help maintain vehicle control, but not always shorten stopping distance. ABS won't increase or decrease ultimate stopping power ABS is an add-on to your normal brakes, not a replacement for them. ABS won't change the way you normally brake. Under normal brake conditions, your vehicle will stop as it always stopped. ABS only comes into play when a wheel would normally have locked up because of over braking. ABS won't compensate for bad brakes or poor brake maintenance. Remember the best vehicle safety feature is still a safe driver. Remember drive so you never need to use your ABS. Remember if you need it, ABS could help to prevent a serious crash. 10.7 Special Safety Considerations 10.7.1 Strobe Lights Some school buses are equipped with roof, mounted, white strobe lights. If your bus is so equipped, the overhead strobe light should be used when you have limited visibility. This means that you cannot easily see around you in front, behind, or beside the school bus. Your visibility could be only slightly limited or it could be so bad that you can see nothing at all. In all instances, understand and obey your state or local regulations concerning the use of these lights. 10.7.2 Driving in high winds Strong winds affect the handling of the school bus. The side of a school bus acts like a sail on a sailboat. Strong winds can push the school bus sideways. They can even move the school bus off the road or, in extreme conditions, tip it over. 2015-2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 10 School Buses Page 10-11 to 11. If you are caught in strong winds keep a strong grip on the steering wheel. Try to anticipate gusts. You should slow down to lessen the effect of the wind, or pull off the roadway and wait. Contact your dispatcher to get more information on how to proceed. 10.7.3 Backing Backing a school bus is strongly discouraged. You should back your bus only when you have no other safe way to move the vehicle. You should never back a school bus when students are outside of the bus. Backing is dangerous and increases your risk of a collision. If you have no choice and you must back your bus, follow these procedures post a lookout. The purpose of the lookout is to warn you about obstacles, approaching persons, and other vehicles. The lookout should not give directions on how to back the bus. Signal for quiet on the bus. Constantly check all mirrors and rear windows. Back slowly and smoothly. If no lookout is available set the parking brake. Turn off the motor and take the keys with you. Walk to the rear of the bus to determine whether the way is clear. If you must back up at a student pickup point, be sure to pick up students before backing and watch for latecomers at all times. Be sure that all students are in the bus before backing. If you must back up at a student drop-off point, be sure to unload students after backing. 10.7.4 Tail Swing A school bus can have up to a 3-foot tail swing. You need to check your mirrors before and during any turning movements to monitor the tail swing. Section 10 Test Your Knowledge 1. Define the danger zone How far does the danger zone extend around the bus? 2. What should you be able to see if the outside flat mirrors are adjusted properly? The outside convex mirrors The crossover mirrors 3. You are loading students along the route When should you activate your alternating flashing amber warning lights? 4. You are unloading students along your route. Where should students walk to after exiting the bus? 
5 after unloading at school, why should you walk through the bus? 6 what position should students be in front of the bus before they cross the roadway? 7 under what conditions must you evacuate the bus? 8 how far from the nearest rail should you stop at a highway rail crossing? 9 what is a passive highway rail crossing? Why should you be extra cautious at this type of crossing? 10. How should you use your brakes if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes ABS? These questions may be on your test. If you can't answer them all, reread section 10. 2015 to 2016 commercial driver's license handbook. Section 10 school buses page 10 to 12. This page intentionally left blank. 2015 to 2016 commercial driver's license handbook. Section 11, pre-trip vehicle inspection page 11 to 1. Section 11 pre-trip vehicle inspection test. This section covers all vehicles external inspection school bus only trailer coach slash transit bus taking the CDL pre-trip inspection test. During the pre-trip inspection, you must show that the vehicle is safe to drive. You will have to walk around the vehicle and point to or touch each item and explain to the examiner what you are checking and why. You will not have to crawl under the hood or under the vehicle. 11.1 All Vehicles Study the following vehicle parts for the type of vehicle you will be using during the CDL skills tests. You should be able to identify each part and tell the examiner what you are looking for or inspecting. 11.1.1 Engine Compartment Engine Off Leak slash hoses look for puddles on the ground. Look for dripping fluids on underside of engine and transmission. Inspect hoses for condition and leaks. Oil level indicate where dipstick is located. See that oil level is within safe operating range. Level must be above refill mark. Coolant level inspect reservoir sight glass, or if engine is not hot, remove radiator cap and check for visible coolant level. Power steering fluid. Indicate where power steering fluid dipstick is located. Check for adequate power steering fluid level. Level must be above refill mark. Engine compartment belts check the following belts for snugness up to 3 fourths inch play at center of belt, cracks, or phrase, power steering belt. Water pump belt. Alternator belt. Air compressor belt. Note if any of the components listed above are not belt driven, you must tell the examiner which components are not belt driven. Make sure components are operating properly, are not damaged or leaking, and are mounted securely. Safe start depress clutch. Place gearshift lever in neutral or park, for automatic transmissions. Start engine, then release clutch slowly. 11.1.2 cab check slash engine start. Oil pressure gauge make sure oil pressure gauge is working. Check that pressure gauge shows increasing or normal oil pressure or that the warning light goes off. If equipped, oil temperature gauge should begin a gradual rise to the normal operating range. Temperature gauge make sure the temperature gauge is working. Temperature should begin to climb to the normal operating range or temperature light should be off. Air gauge make sure the air gauge is working properly. Build air pressure to governor cutout, roughly 120, 140 psi. Ammeter slash voltmeter check that gauges show alternator and slash or generator is charging or that warning light is off. 2015 to 2016 commercial driver's license handbook. Section 11, pre-trip vehicle inspection page 11 to 2. Mirrors and windshield mirrors should be clean and adjusted properly from the inside. Windshield should be clean with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, or damage to the glass. 
Emergency equipment check for spare electrical fuses. Check for three red reflective triangles, six fuses or three liquid burning flares. Check for a properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Note if the vehicle is not equipped with electrical fuses, you must mention this to the examiner. Wipers slash washers check that wiper arms and blades are secure, not damaged, and operate smoothly. If equipped, windshield washers must operate correctly. Light slash reflectors slash reflector tape condition sides rear test that dash indicators work when corresponding lights are turned on, left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way emergency flashers. High beam headlight. Anti-lock braking system ABS indicator. Check that all external lights and reflective equipment are clean and functional. Light and reflector checks include, clearance lights red on rear, amber elsewhere. Headlights high and low beams. Tail lights. Backing lights. Turn signals. Four-way flashers. Brake lights. Red reflectors on rear and amber reflectors elsewhere. Reflector tape condition. No checks of brake, turn signal and four-way flasher functions must be done separately. Horn. Check that air horn and slash or electric horn work. Heater slash defroster test that the heater and defroster work. Parking brake check with the parking brake engaged trailer brakes released on combination vehicles. Check that the parking brake will hold vehicle by gently trying to pull forward with parking brake on. With the parking brake released and the trailer parking brake engaged combination vehicles only. Check that the trailer parking brake will hold vehicle by gently trying to pull forward with the trailer parking brake on. Hydraulic brake check pump the brake pedal three times, then hold it down for five seconds. The brake pedal should not move depressed during the five seconds. If equipped with a hydraulic brake reserve back, up system, with the key off, depress the brake pedal and listen for the sound of the reserve system electric motor. Check that the warning buzzer or light is off. Air brake check air brake equipped vehicles only failure to perform all three components of the air brake check correctly will result in an automatic failure of the vehicle inspection test. Air brake safety devices vary. However, this procedure is designed to see that any safety device operates correctly as air pressure drops from normal to a low air condition. For safety purposes, in areas where an incline is present, you will use wheel chocks during the air brake check. The proper procedures for inspecting the air brake system are as follows. With the air pressure built up to governor cutoff 120-140 psi, shut off the engine, chalk your wheels if necessary, release the parking brake all vehicles. And the tractor protection valve combination vehicle and fully apply the foot brake. Hold the foot brake for one minute. Check the air gauge to see if the air pressure drops more than 3 pounds in 1 minute single vehicle or 4 pounds in 1 minute combination vehicle. Without restarting the engine, turn electrical power to the on or battery charge position. Begin fanning off the air pressure by rapidly applying and releasing the foot brake. Low air warning devices buzzer. 2015 to 2016 commercial drivers license handbook. Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11-3 Light, flag should activate before air pressure drops below 60 psi or level specified by the manufacturer. Continue to fan off the air pressure. At approximately 40 psi on a tractor-trailer combination vehicle or level specified by the manufacturer, the tractor protection valve and parking brake valve should close pop out. On other combination vehicle types and single vehicle types, the parking brake valve should close pop out. Service brake check you will be required to check the application of air or hydraulic service brakes. 
This procedure is designed to determine that the brakes are working correctly and that the vehicle does not pull to one side or the other. Pull forward at 5 mph, apply the service brake and stop. Check to see that the vehicle does not pull to either side and that it stops when brake is applied. Safety belt check that the safety belt is securely mounted, adjusts, latches properly and is not ripped or frayed. 11.2 External Inspection All Vehicles 11.21 Steering Steering Box Slash Hoses Check that the steering box is securely mounted and not leaking. Look for any missing nuts, bolts, and cotter keys. Check for power steering fluid leaks or damage to power steering hoses. Steering linkage See that connecting links, arms, and rods from the steering box to the wheel are not worn or cracked. Check that joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. 11.2.2 Suspension Spring Slash Air Slash Torque Look for missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaf springs. Look for broken or distorted coil springs. If vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, check that they are not damaged and are mounted securely. Air ride suspension should be checked for damage and leaks. Mounts look for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing bolts, U-bolts or other axle mounting parts. The mounts should be checked at each point where they are secured to the vehicle frame and axles. Shock absorbers see that shock absorbers are secure and that there are no leaks. Note be prepared to perform the same suspension components inspection on every axle power unit and trailer, if equipped. 11.2.3 Brakes Slack adjusters and push rods look for broken, loose, or missing parts. For manual slack adjusters, the brake push rod should not move more than one inch with the brakes released when pulled by hand. Brake chambers see that brake chambers are not leaking, cracked, or dented and are mounted securely. Brake hoses slash lines look for cracked, worn, or leaking hoses, lines, and couplings. Drum brake check for cracks, dents, or holes. Also check for loose or missing bolts. Check for contaminates such debris or oil slash grease. Brake linings where visible should not be worn dangerously thin. Brake linings on some brake drums, there are openings where the brake linings can be seen from outside the drum. For this type of drum, check that a visible amount of brake lining is showing. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11 to 4 Note be prepared to perform the same brake components inspection on every axle power unit and trailer, if equipped. 11.2.4 Wheels Rims check for damaged or bent rims. Rims cannot have welding repairs. Tires The following items must be inspected on every tire tread depth check for minimum tread depth for 30 seconds on steering axle tires, 230 seconds on all other tires. Tire condition check that tread is evenly worn and look for cuts or other damage to tread or side walls. Also, make sure that valve caps and stems are not missing, broken, or damaged. Tire inflation check for proper inflation by using a tire gauge. Note you will not get credit if you simply kick the tires to check for proper inflation. Hub oil seal slash axle seals. See that hub oil slash grease seals and axle seals are not leaking and, if wheel has a sight glass, oil level is adequate. Lug nuts. Check that all lug nuts are present free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Make sure all bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. Spacers or bud spacing. If equipped, check that spacers are not bent, damaged, 
or rusted through. Spacers should be evenly centered, with the dual wheels and tires evenly separated. Note be prepared to perform the same wheel inspection on every axle power unit and trailer, if equipped. 11.2.5 Side of Vehicle Door slash mirrors check that doors are not damaged and that they open and close properly from the outside. Hinges should be secure with seals intact. Check that mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. Fuel tank check that tanks are secure, caps are tight, and that there are no leaks from tanks or lines. Drive shaft see that drive shaft is not bent or cracked. Couplings should be secure and free of foreign objects. Exhaust system check system for damage and signs of leaks such as rust or carbon soot. System should be connected tightly and mounted securely. Frame look for cracks, broken welds, holes or other damage to the longitudinal frame members, cross members, box, and floor. 11.2.6 Rear of Vehicle Splash guards if equipped, check that splash guards or mud flaps are not damaged and are mounted securely. Door slash tie slash lifts check that doors and hinges are not damaged and that they open, close, and latch properly from the outside, if equipped. Ties, straps, chains, and binders must also be secure. If equipped with a cargo lift, look for leaking, damaged or missing parts and explain how it should be checked for correct operation. Lift must be fully retracted and latched securely. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11 to 5 11.2.7 Tractor Slash Coupling Air Slash Electric Lines Listen for Air Leaks Check that air hoses and electrical lines are not cut, chafed, spliced, or worn steel braid should not show through. Make sure air and electrical lines are not tangled, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts. Catwalk slash steps check that the catwalk is solid, clear of objects, and securely bolted to tractor frame. Check that steps leading to the cab entry and catwalk if equipped are solid, clear of objects, and securely bolted to tractor frame. Mounting bolts look for loose or missing mounting brackets, clamps, bolts, or nuts. Both the fifth wheel and the slide mounting must be solidly attached. On other types of coupling systems i.e., ball hitch, pintle hook, etc., inspect all coupling components and mounting brackets for missing or broken parts. Hitch release lever check to see that the hitch release lever is in place and is secure. Locking jaws look into fifth wheel gap and check that locking jaws are fully closed around the kingpin. On other types of coupling systems i.e., ball hitch, pintle hook, etc., inspect the locking mechanism for missing or broken parts and make sure it is locked securely. If present, safety cables or chains must be secure and free of kinks and excessive slack. Fifth wheel skid plate check for proper lubrication and that fifth wheel skid plate is securely mounted to the platform and that all bolts and pins are secure and not missing. Platform fifth wheel check for cracks or breaks in the platform structure which supports the fifth wheel skid plate. Release arm fifth wheel if equipped, make sure the release arm is in the engaged position and the safety latch is in place. Kingpin slash apron slash gap. Check that the kingpin is not bent. Make sure the visible part of the apron is not bent, cracked, or broken. Check that the trailer is laying flat on the fifth wheel skid plate no gap. Locking pins fifth wheel if equipped, look for loose or missing pins in the slide mechanism of the sliding fifth wheel. If air powered, check for leaks. Make sure locking pins are fully engaged. Check that the fifth wheel is positioned properly so that the tractor frame will clear the landing gear during turns. 
Sliding pintle check that the sliding pintle is secured with no loose or missing nuts or bolts and cotter pin is in place. Tongue or drawbar check that the tongue slash drawbar is not bent or twisted and checks for broken welds and stress cracks. Check that the tongue slash drawbar is not worn excessively. Tongue storage area check that the storage area is solid and secured to the tongue. Check that cargo in the storage area i.e. chains, binders, etc. are secure. 11.3 school bus only. Emergency equipment in addition to checking for spare electrical fuses if equipped, three red reflective triangles, and a properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. School bus drivers must also inspect the following emergency equipment, emergency kit, body fluid cleanup kit. Lighting indicators In addition to checking the lighting indicators listed in section 10.2 of this manual, school bus drivers must also check the following lighting indicators internal panel lights. Alternately flashing amber lights indicator, if equipped. 2015 to 2016 commercial drivers license handbook section 11 pre-trip vehicle inspection page 11 to 6 alternately flashing red lights indicator strobe light indicator if equipped light slash reflectors in addition to checking the lights and reflective devices listed in section 10.2 of this manual School bus drivers must also check the following external lights and reflectors. Strobe light, if equipped. Stop arm light, if equipped. Alternately flashing amber lights, if equipped. Alternately flashing red lights. Student mirrors in addition to checking the external mirrors, School bus drivers must also check the internal and external mirrors used for observing students check for proper adjustment. Checks that all internal and external mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. Checks that visibility is not impaired due to dirty mirrors. Stop arm if equipped, check the stop arm to see that it is mounted securely to the frame of the vehicle. Also check for loose fittings and damage passenger entry slash lift check that the entry door is not damaged operates smoothly and closes securely from the inside handrails are secure and the step light is working if equipped the entry steps must be clear with the treads not loose or worn excessively if equipped with a handicap lift look for leaking damaged or missing parts and explain how lift should be checked for correct operation. Lift must be fully retracted and latched securely. Emergency exit make sure that all emergency exits are not damaged, operate smoothly, and close securely from the inside. Check that any emergency exit warning devices are working. Seating Look for broken seat frames and check that seat frames are firmly attached to the floor. Check that seat cushions are attached securely to the seat frames. 11.4 Trailer 11.4.1 Trailer Front Air slash electrical connections check that trailer air connectors are sealed and in good condition. Make sure glad hands are locked in place, free of damage or air leaks. Make sure the trailer electrical plug is firmly seated and locked in place. Header board if equipped, check the header board to see that it is secure, free of damage, and strong enough to contain cargo. If equipped, the canvas or tarp carrier must be mounted and fastened securely. On enclosed trailers, check the front area for signs of damage such as cracks, bulges, or holes. 11.4.2 side of trailer landing gear check that the landing gear is fully raised has no missing parts crank handle is secure and the support frame is not damaged if power operated check for air or hydraulic leaks door slash tie slash lifts if equipped check that doors are not damaged check doors open close and latch properly from the outside Check that ties, 
straps, chains, and binders are secure. If equipped with a cargo lift, look for leaking, damaged or missing parts and explain how it should be checked for correct operation. Lift should be fully retracted and latched securely. Frame look for cracks, broken welds, holes or other damage to the frame, cross members, box, and floor. Tandem release arm slash locking pins. 2015 to 2016 commercial driver's license handbook. Section 11, pre-trip vehicle inspection page 11 to 7. If equipped, make sure the locking pins are locked in place and release arm is secured. 11.4.3 remainder of trailer. Remainder of trailer please refer to section 11.2 of this manual for detailed inspection procedures regarding the following components, wheels, suspension system, brakes, door slash tie slash lift, splash guards, 11.5 coach slash transit bus, 11.5.1 .1 passenger items. Passenger entry slash lift check that entry doors operate smoothly and close securely from the inside. Check that handrails are secure and, if equipped, that the step lights are working. Check that the entry steps are clear, with the treads not loose or worn excessively. If equipped with a handicap lift, look for any leaking, damaged or missing part, and explain how it should be checked for correct operation. Lift should be fully retracted and latched securely. Emergency exits make sure that all emergency exits are not damaged, operate smoothly, and close securely from the inside. Check that any emergency exit warning devices are working. Passenger seating look for broken seat frames and check that seat frames are firmly attached to the floor. Check that seat cushions are attached securely to the seat frames. 11.5.2 Entry Slash Exit Doors Slash Mirrors Check that Entry Slash Exit Doors are not damaged and operate smoothly from the outside. Hinges should be secure with seals intact. Make sure that the passenger exit mirrors and all external mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. 11.5.3 External Inspection of Coach Slash Transit Bus Level slash air leak see that the vehicle is sitting level front and rear, and if air equipped, check for audible air leaks from the suspension system. Fuel tanks see that fuel tanks are secure with no leaks from tanks or lines. Baggage compartments check that baggage and all other exterior compartment doors are not damaged, operate properly, and latch securely. Battery slash box wherever located, see that batteries are secure, Connections are tight, and cell caps are present. Battery connections should not show signs of excessive corrosion. Check that battery box and cover or door is not damaged and is secure. 11.5.4 Remainder of Coach Slash Transit Bus Remainder of Vehicle Please refer to Section 11.2 of this manual for detailed inspection procedures for the remainder of the vehicle. Remember, the pre-trip vehicle inspection must be passed before you can proceed to the basic vehicle control skills test. 11.6 Taking the CDL pre-trip inspection test. 11.6.1 .1 Class A pre-trip inspection test. If you are applying for a Class A CDL, you will be required to perform one of the four versions of a pre-trip inspection in the vehicle you have brought with you for testing. Each of the four tests are equivalent and you will not know which test you will take until just before the testing begins. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11 to 8 All of the tests include an engine start, an in-cab, inspection, and an inspection of the coupling system. Then, your test may require an inspection of the entire vehicle or only a portion of the vehicle which your CDL examiner will explain to you. 
11.6.2 Class B and C Pre-Trip Inspection Test If you are applying for a Class B CDL, you will be required to perform one of the three versions of a pre-trip inspection in the vehicle you have brought with you for testing. Each of the three tests are equivalent and you will not know which test you will take until just before the testing begins. All of the tests include an engine start and an in-cab inspection. Then, your test may require an inspection of the entire vehicle or only a portion of the vehicle which your CDL examiner will explain to you. You will also have to inspect any special features of your vehicle e.g., school or transit bus. 2015-2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11-9 2015-2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 11, Pre-Trip Vehicle Inspection Page 11-10 this page left intentionally blank. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Drivers License Handbook. Section 12 Basic Control Skills page 12 to 1. Section 12 Basic Vehicle Control Skills Test. This section covers scoring exercises. Your basic control skills could be tested using one or more of the following exercises off-road or somewhere on the street during the road test straight line backing. Offset backslash right offset backslash left parallel park driver side. Parallel park conventional. Alley dock. These exercises are shown in figures 12 to 1 through 12 to 6. 12.1 Scoring Crossing Boundaries Encroachments Pull UPS Vehicle Exits Final Position Encroachments The examiner will score the number of times you touch or cross over an exercise boundary line or cone with any portion of your vehicle. Each encroachment will count as an error. Pull UPS When a driver stops and pulls forward to clear an encroachment or to get a better position, it is scored as a pull-up. Stopping without changing direction does not count as a pull-up. You will not be penalized for initial pull-ups. However, an excessive number of pull UPS will count as errors. Outside vehicle observations looks you may be permitted to safely stop and exit the vehicle to check the external position of the vehicle look. When doing so, you must place the vehicle in neutral and set the parking brakes. Then, when exiting the vehicle, you must do so safely by facing the vehicle and maintaining three points of contact with the vehicle at all times when exiting it. Bus Maintain a firm grasp on the handrail at all times. If you do not safely secure the vehicle or safely exit the vehicle it may result in an automatic failure of the basic control skills test. The maximum number of times that you may look to check the position of your vehicle is 2-2 except for the straight line backing exercise, which allows one look. Each time you open the door, move from a seated position where in physical control of the vehicle or on a bus walk to the back of a bus to get a better view, it is scored as a look. Final position It is important that you finish each exercise exactly as the examiner has instructed you. If you do not maneuver the vehicle into its final position as described by the examiner, you will be penalized and could fail the basic skills test. 12.2 Exercises 12.2.1 Straight Line Backing You may be asked to back your vehicle in a straight line between two rows of cones without touching or crossing over the exercise boundaries. See Figure 12.1 12.2.2 Offset Backslash Right You may be asked to back into a space that is to the right rear of your vehicle. You will drive straight forward the outer boundary. From that position, you must back the vehicle into the opposite lane until the front of your vehicle has passed the first set of cones without striking boundary lines or cones. See Figure 12.2 12.2.3 Offset Backslash Left You may be asked to back into a space that is to the left rear of your vehicle. 
you will drive straight forward the outer boundary. From that position, you must back the vehicle into the opposite lane until the front of your vehicle has passed the first set of cones without striking boundary lines or cones. See Figure 12.3 12.2.4 Parallel Park Driver Side You may be asked to park in a parallel parking space that is on your left. You are to drive past the entrance to the parallel parking space with your vehicle parallel to the parking area. And back into the space without crossing front, side or rear boundaries marked by cones. You are required to 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 12 Basic Control Skills Page 12 to 2 Get your entire vehicle completely into the space. See Figure 12.4 12.2.5 Parallel Park Conventional You may be asked to park in a parallel parking space that is on your right. You are to drive past the entrance to the parallel parking space with your vehicle parallel to the parking area. And back into the space without crossing front, side or rear boundaries marked by cones. You are required to get your entire vehicle completely into the space. See Figure 12.5 12.2.6 Alley Dock You may be asked to side side back your vehicle into an alley. You will drive past the alley and position your vehicle parallel to the outer boundary. From that position, back into the alley bringing the rear of your vehicle within 3 feet of the rear of the alley without touching boundary lines or cones. Your vehicle must be straight within the alley slash lane when completed. See figure 12.6 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 12 Basic Control Skills Page 12 to 1 Figure 12.1 Straight Line Backing Figure 12.2 Offset Backslash Right Figure 12.3 Offset Backslash Left 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 12 Basic Control Skills Page 12 to 4 Figure 12.4 Parallel Park Driver Side Figure 12.5 Parallel Park Conventional Side Side Parallel Park Side Side Parallel Park Minimum of 225 FT Minimum of 225 FT 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 12 Basic Control Skills Page 12 to 5 Figure 12.6 Alley Dock 90 Degrees Alley Dock 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 12 Basic Control Skills Page 12 to 6 This page intentionally left blank 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook Section 13 On Road Driving this section covers How you will be tested You will drive over a test route that has a variety of traffic situations. At all times during the test, you must drive in a safe and responsible manner, and Wear your safety belt Obey all traffic signs, signals, and laws Complete the test without an accident or moving violation during the driving test, the examiner will be scoring you on specific driving maneuvers as well as on your general driving behavior. You will follow the directions of the examiner. Directions will be given to you so you will have plenty of time to do what the examiner has asked. You will not be asked to drive in an unsafe manner. If your test route does not have certain traffic situations, you may be asked to simulate a traffic situation. You will do this by telling the examiner what you are or would be doing if you were in that traffic situation. 13.1 How you will be tested 13.1.1 Turns You have been asked to make a turn check traffic in all directions. 
use turn signals and safely get into the lane needed for the turn. As you approach the turn use turn signals to warn others of your turn. Slow down smoothly, change gears as needed to keep power, but do not coast unsafely. Unsafe coasting occurs when your vehicle is out of gear clutch depressed or gear shift in neutral for more than the length of your vehicle. If you must stop before making the turn come to a smooth stop without skidding. Come to a complete stop behind the stop line, crosswalk, or stop sign. If stopping behind another vehicle, stop where you can see the rear tires on the vehicle ahead of you safe gap. Do not let your vehicle roll. Keep the front wheels aimed straight ahead. When ready to turn check traffic in all directions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel during the turn. Keep checking your mirror to make sure the vehicle does not hit anything on the inside of the turn. Vehicle should not move into oncoming traffic. Vehicle should finish turn in correct lane. After turn make sure turn signal is off. Get up to speed of traffic, use turn signal, and move into rightmost lane when safe to do so if not already there. Check mirrors and traffic. 13.1.2 Intersections As you approach an intersection check traffic thoroughly in all directions. Decelerate gently. Brake smoothly and, if necessary, change gears. If necessary, come to a complete stop no coasting behind any stop signs, signals, sidewalks, or stop lines maintaining a safe gap behind any vehicle in front of you. Your vehicle must not roll forward or backward. When driving through an intersection check traffic thoroughly in all directions. Decelerate and yield to any pedestrians and traffic in the intersection. Do not change lanes while proceeding through the intersection. Keep your hands on the wheel. Once through the intersection continue checking mirrors and traffic. Accelerate smoothly and change gears as necessary. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook 13.1.3 Urban Business During this part of the test, you are expected to make regular traffic checks and maintain a safe following distance. Your vehicle should be centered in the proper lane rightmost lane and you should keep up with the flow of traffic but not exceed the posted speed limit. 13.1.4 Lane Changes During multiple lane portions of the test, you will be asked to change lanes to the left, and then back to the right. You should make the necessary traffic checks first, then use proper signals and smoothly change lanes when it is safe to do so. 13.1.5 Expressway slash Rural slash Limited Access Highway Before entering the expressway check traffic Use proper signals Merge smoothly into the proper lane of traffic Once on the expressway maintain proper lane positioning, vehicle spacing, and vehicle speed Continue to check traffic thoroughly in all directions when exiting the expressway make necessary traffic checks. Use proper signals. Decelerate smoothly in the exit lane. Once on the exit ramp, you must continue to decelerate within the lane markings and maintain adequate spacing between your vehicle and other vehicles. 13.1.6 Stop Slash Start For this maneuver, you will be asked to pull your vehicle over to the side of the road and stop as if you were going to get out and check something on your vehicle. You must check traffic thoroughly in all directions and move to the rightmost lane or shoulder of road. As you prepare for the stop check traffic, activate your right turn signal. Decelerate smoothly, brake evenly, change gears as necessary. Bring your vehicle to a full stop without coasting. One stopped vehicle must be parallel to the curb or shoulder of the road and safely out of the traffic flow. Vehicle should not be blocking driveways, fire hydrants, intersections, signs, etc. Cancel your turn signal. 
Activate your four-way emergency flashers. Apply the parking brake. Move the gear shift to neutral or park. Remove your feet from the brake and clutch pedals. When instructed to resume check traffic and your mirrors thoroughly in all directions. Turn off your four-way flashers. Activate the left turn signal. When traffic permits, you should release the parking brake and pull straight ahead. Do not turn the wheel before your vehicle moves. Check traffic from all directions, especially to the left. Steer and accelerate smoothly into the proper lane when safe to do so. Once your vehicle is back into the flow of traffic, cancel your left turn signal. 13.1.7 Curve When approaching a curve check traffic thoroughly in all directions. Before entering the curve, reduce speed so further braking or shifting is not required in the curve. Keep vehicle in the lane. Continue checking traffic in all directions. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook. 13.1.8 Railroad Crossing. Before reaching the crossing, all commercial drivers should decelerate, brake smoothly, and shift gears as necessary. Look and listen for the presence of trains. Check traffic in all directions. Do not stop, change gears, pass another vehicle, or change lanes while any part of your vehicle is in the crossing. If you are driving a bus, a school bus, or a vehicle displaying placards, you should be prepared to observe the following procedures at every railroad crossing unless the crossing is exempt. As the vehicle approaches a railroad crossing, activate the four-way flashers. Stop the vehicle within 50 feet but not less than 15 feet from the nearest rail. Listen and look in both directions along the track for an approaching train and for signals indicating the approach of a train. If operating a bus, you may also be required to open the window and door prior to crossing tracks. Keep hands on the steering wheel as the vehicle crosses the tracks. Do not stop, change gears, or change lanes while any part of your vehicle is proceeding across the tracks. Four-way flashers should be deactivated after the vehicle crosses the tracks. Continue to check mirrors and traffic. Note in Florida CDL tests, railroad crossings for all vehicles will be scored according to procedures for vehicles transporting passengers or hazmat sections 4.3.5 and September 6, 12. Not all driving road test routes will have a railroad crossing. You may be asked to explain and demonstrate the proper railroad crossing procedures to the examiner at a simulated location. 13.1.9 Bridge Slash Overpass Slash Sign After driving under an overpass, you may be asked to tell the examiner what the posted clearance or height was. After going over a bridge, you may be asked to tell the examiner what the posted weight limit was. If your test route does not have a bridge or overpass, you may be asked about another. Traffic Sign When asked, be prepared to identify and explain to the examiner any traffic sign which may appear on the route. 2015 to 2016 Commercial Driver's License Handbook 13.1.10 Student Discharge School Bus If you are applying for a school bus endorsement, you will be required to demonstrate loading and unloading students. Please refer to Section 10 of this manual for procedures on loading and unloading school students. 13.1.11 General Driving Behaviors You will be scored on your overall performance in the following general driving behavior categories. 13.111 A clutch usage for manual transmission always use clutch to shift. Double clutch when shifting. Do not rev or lug the engine. Do not ride clutch to control speed, coast with the clutch depressed, or pop the clutch. 13.112 B gear usage for manual transmission do not grind or clash gears. Select gear that does not rev or lug engine. Do not shift in turns and intersections. 
13.113C brake usage do not ride or pump brake. Do not brake harshly. Brake smoothly using steady pressure. 13.114D lane usage do not put vehicle over curbs, sidewalks, or lane markings. Stop behind stop lines, crosswalks, or stop signs. Complete a turn in the proper lane on a multiple lane road vehicle should finish a left turn in the lane directly to the right of the center line. Finish a right turn in the rightmost curb lane. Move to or remain in rightmost lane unless lane is blocked. 13.1.15 Steering Do not over or under steer the vehicle. Keep both hands on the steering wheel at all times, unless shifting. Once you have completed shift, return both hands to the steering wheel.